Hi everyone, this is James, this is Eurovision Island, and this is the return of Review in 2. You know the drill by now, all the songs heading to the Eurovision Song Contest 2022 in Turin in just two minutes or less, because we know your time is very precious to you. Please take a moment to make sure you're subscribed to our channel so you don't miss any future videos, and if you'd like to leave a like or a comment down below, then please do so. So, without any further ado, andiamo a Torino! Next up, we're going to take a look at Eurovision favourites, Ukraine, Kalush Orchestra and Stefania. Now, we're not going to go through all the drama of what happened at Vidvir because you all know this story, so we're just going to look at Stefania as the song that is representing Ukraine in Turin. Now, when I saw this performed at Vidbir, it immediately stood out to me and I thought this might be one to watch for the win and I suspected it was going to do incredibly well in the televote. And of course, we know with hindsight that it won with nearly 50% of the entire televote for Ukraine, so that's amazing by itself. The performance, it starts out with Ikor singing in a very deep throw to Ukrainian. It feels very folkloric, very traditional. So I thought, okay, we're going to get a real Ukrainian ethno ballad here. And then all of a sudden, Oleg springs onto the stage. It really shifts gear and it becomes this really urban sounding rap track. And those two things, in my mind, shouldn't work together, but they work really, really well. And it just draws you in because you're thinking, oh, wow, what's happening? You, you're paying attention. You want to see what happens next. Um, staging, I think, works really well. They're wearing traditional garb. There's lots of patterns and things on the background. It looks very much like a Vishivanka, so again, this is all great. And I love the fact that it's in Ukrainian, because this is the third year in a row that Ukraine have sent the song to Eurovision in Ukrainian. I think that's wonderful. Now, Ihor was also a member of the band Go A, and he works with them, so having that sort of Eurovision know-how, knowing what to expect at the contest, that's always good from the point of view of an artist. And Oleg is just so charismatic, the way he bounds around that stage, you know, the crowd are absolutely loving him, and you can tell when a performer loves it and they're in their element, and we really see that from him. And also the fact he's wearing that bright pink hat, you know, you just can't not notice that. So again, this is all stuff that helps draw an audience and potential voter in. Now the song itself, it's got some strong motifs of motherhood, time passing, and also those lines, you know, I want to hear native words. So it's almost like a love letter to Ukrainian, which I understand why it did so, so well in the televote. Now, there always has been and there always will be a lot of love for Ukraine out there in Europe, and I think getting to a final is absolutely going to be no problem there. I think Ukraine's 100% qualification record is going to be well intact. I know that a lot could potentially happen between now and May, but all I'll say on that is that Ukraine, I speak for everyone, I know, I speak for everyone watching this video, that we are thinking of you every step of the way and we have you all in our hearts. <laughs> So that was my review in two. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned on this playlist for the next episode in the next country. Or why not check out some of the other features on our YouTube channel, including our panel review shows, interviews, and of course our Best of Eurovision series. Alternatively, head on over to EurovisionIslands.net for all our coverage of the national selection season 2022, including interviews, news, polls, and of course our live blogs. Okay, that's all for now. Hope to see you again soon. Thank you, Europe, and good night.